Very, it's really bright, I mean, it's really strong colour. Uh, I've used the yellow, or dyed yellow, Jungle Cock Eyes. On this one I'm going to use just the natural, just to give you an idea of what it's like. The natural's as good as uh, the dyed. Just the yellow adds a wee bit extra colour to it, but it works without it as well. Now the hook I'm using, this is a Sala, so it's just a gold double. Now you can tie them as large as you want, as small as you want, depending on the where you're fishing with time thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread an 8 and fire orange and then start to work my way down and about halfway I'll tie in a small gold oval tinsel tie it on the top tie it in where you want if it suits you yeah I'm tying it on a bare hook but this will not pull out because uh, salad hooks are nice and nice and flat Bring it down until it's in line with the points of the hook and then wind down three to four times. Bend, just come around the bend and bring the oval tinsel between the hooks, tighten up. Now I usually trim this away, trim it halfway up. That's a measure for the centre or the middle hackle. Now I put the tail on a couple of ways. It's just winding it on as normal. This is a golden pheasant skin dyed hot orange. This is the skin there. And I'm going to be using the, the rump feather. As you can see, it's lovely bright orange colour. And then this is the breast feather. And these are dyed nice, obviously, orange as well as the red. They're actually red, so it's really strong. So I'm going to tie in by the tip. And two or three turns down. Two or three turns back up. And then back down. I'm just going to basically form an area for winding the hackle. Now, because it's well tied in, I can break off the tip. Just break that away. And then I'm going to fold the fibre. I like to fold it on the hook. And then, depending again who, what you like, depending on what turns you want, anyway, you can stop it at a full turn. If it's sparse, which is there. Or I'm just going to come round. Depends on the feather as well. So should do it there. Now, as, I, as it comes round, what I do is I put a 90 degree bend into the feather and then tighten up. And then I just work my way up halfway to the point where I'm going to tie in the centre hackle. Just slightly short, actually. And then I can break this off. Now you will have caught some fibres. Now I've got a wee toothbrush here. Just going to make sure these are spread out. Use the brush instead of your fingers because you will catch the point of that spare hook there. I usually just fold these back. You can either trim them away or fold them back. I, as I say, I just fold them back. And then start to work my way back down. At this point, we catch in on the underside, the oval tinsel, the same tinsel I used in the tag. Nice and tight. Right up against, and there we are. You've got a nice strong tail on that. Now, what I'm going to do here is, this is blue, I'm saying it's blue and yellow macaw. It's a tail feather. I'm taking a strand from either side. Now you can get this on, I got this on eBay. The, the bird is not harmed in any way, it just drops these feathers. And the owners sell them. And they sell them basically to pay, obviously, for food for the animals. So. Now when you tie these in, these are basically like antennae. You can tie them at an angle and longer than the tail. You can see how long it is. So that's on your side. Because you've got a right and a left, you'll get that nice mark. And on my side. Now these do last long. 
and it's amazing how they'll show up in the water. So, but it's a it's a wee it's a wee bit extra. It's up to yourself if you want to put them in. And then trim the full length of that first part of the body. And the colour's going to be this this floss here. This is Chinese red. And the uni floss to the length of this. There's a lot of materials in this ply. There's tiny wee touches. And it's amazing the colour it is when it's finished. And then I'm just going to wind this up. Neat as you can. Tying in everything. There we are. And then you can remember your first turn or so. Now I'm going to check my first turn. It's right up against. That's it. And then just watch your rub. From your body. Just imagine if this is a, a wee wet fly and there's a body and you're going to be tying the hackle in here. It's that point there, across your thread. There's your head length just at that point there. Just trim away your floss. And bring your rib up. About three turns is plenty. And again, tidy up in that area. Just imagine the head area in the middle of this hook. And then trim that away. Now, I've got a sunburst hackle. I'll show you the cape. It's a Chinese cape. It's dyed a nice sunburst. Really bright colour. You see, it affects the camera. It <laughs> doesn't like it. It's too bright. But anyway, turn it back a bit so you can see it. Now, you can, depending, you can tie this in. Because it's a nice hackle. It's got a nice fine stem. I can tie this in anywhere. So I can. I can get the softer fibres at the bottom, or the stiffer ones at the top. Just tie it up to see where you want to tie it in. Now I'm going to tie it in. Just, there's a couple of broken ones there, so I'm coming down as well. Down to about there. Just going to trim this away. I'm not going to fold it back or anything, just so I'm saving space. Just catch this on the side with the Good side facing forward, so the front of the hackle facing forward of the eye. Tidy up, shouldn't be wax on there. And then again, I, I fold them when they're on the, when I've tied them in. The length of the fibre can be quite long, it's up to yourself. Now I've got a turn and a half or so, or two turns there. That 90 degree bend again, it's important that you get that 90 degree bend. Uh, it locks in those turns at the back. And then trim them away, just trim that. And again, tidy up, I'm just going to give a bit of wax. Just take your time at this point. See how things are sitting. Now I'm going to use one of the, the rump feathers here, just for a wee bit of extra colour into the hackle. This is the orange one. Just going to be some fibres top and bottom. Now you want it slightly longer in this case. I just like it a wee bit longer. Just tie some on the top. A couple of turns down. Turn it upside down your hook if you can. Some of it. It's amazing how these do make a difference sometimes in your fly. Um, Blue is a great colour to use sometimes as well as red, in this case orange. Just making sure it's right on the underside and slightly longer than the hackle on this point. This, what I'm going to do here is I'm trim this the full length of the, the body, the second part. Yeah. And then I'm going to carry one up just to try and tidy things up. See how things are looking. We've got a slight step there, but we can get rid of that, so we can. Then I'm going to use, in this case, gold wire rib. It's a small wire. Catch this on the underside. And just work my way down. And you see that step there? We can see quite a wee bit of a step. Take a thread onto it. And then come up. Because this is your kind of putting a taper, slight taper in it. 
And then I'm going to use a large, this one, you can use a large or a medium. This is Opal Mirage Tinsel. You can catch on the top. And work all the way down. Because I'm using the large, I can actually spread it out. And it'll help cover that wee space. Now this first turn, I try and basically so that when you bring the tinsel round, the angled edge is on the inside of the dressing. You see that angled edge? You don't want it going into the hackle because it'll flatten it. And you want a straight edge. It's nice and tight, bring this round. Once you've got enough body, and give yourself plenty of room at the top, at least two mil. And then what I do is come round, full turn, the wire. I'm using wire because it protects it better than using the oval tinsel. There's the three turns, so a ninth degree bend into the wire, bit of wax. At this point what I do is just take the thread down, back up, bend and break it away. Get a nice neat cut if you do that. And there we are. There's a lot of work in these flies, I know, but you get a nice colour combination that makes makes a difference. Then and we use in this case this is flame. You need the camera that's nice and bright orange. Get a nice hackle from it. And again, much the same size as the centre hackle, the sunburst one I used. Tie this on. Tie it in by the tip. Fold it back this time and break away the tip and then fold the hackle. Just run it through your fingers. See a couple of turns of this hackle is plenty or so. A ninth degree bend into it. Down and back up a bit and then you can break it off. Having the confidence to do that, you just make you know you've got it nice and tight. But we bit wax on your thread, and then as I like to do, is tidy up. And there we are. Now, what I'm going to do here is tie in two jungle cock eyes. With the same size, just normal ones I'm using here, not dyed. Look at the length you would like. Just going to open out the area where I'm going to tie it in. I like to get some of the kind of badger-like fibres tied in. So I get sure these are the same length, right on the top. Now you usually come around with two or three loose turns. Make sure that the the jungle cops sitting where you want. You see, there they are. Looks okay, I'm just checking the length. I think this one's just a tiny bit too low. Should do it. Now I usually just ignore everything and just take the thread down two or three turns. I know I'm tying in these hackle fibres, you could trim them away, but I usually t I like to tie them in. Just adds to the, the mix of the hackle at the front. Now I'm folding them back as you can see. Can break these off. Keep the thread tight. Just bring these round. So, just folding them slightly, just taking it forward and drawing it back, and you'll see how the eyes sit. And then finish it off. Dyed red badger hackle. Tie this in the front. I'm just going to make sure I've got wax on my thread at this point. Two or three turns down. Two or three turns back up. Break off the point. Now you don't need a lot of this. This basically, if you if you really see this up close, the red badge at the front basically adds a lot of heat, a 
of warmth to the, the front of the fly. So a turn and a half or so. I'm just going to bring this thread, make sure it's right up against the hackle. That 90 degree bend in. Which makes sure, if you, if you do the 90 degree bend into the hackle or any fibre, the turns you've made will stay nice and tight. Now I'm going to have plenty of room here to fold this back. So just tidy up the head area. A bit of wax. If it starts to slip, just put a wee bit of wax and zigzag the thread so that it's kind of like crisscrossing it. Always keep the thread nice and tight. And what finish? At the same time, what I'm doing here is when I'm what finishing, I'm tidying the head area up, cleaning the thread now with my fingers just to take the excess wax away. Trim away your thread, and then trim away your hackle. And there we are. So I know it's a bit of work in the fly, but it's worth it when you see it. And this is really as pushing your shrimp patterns to the extreme. There's a lot of work in some like this, and uh, like great fun to tie. I'm just going to come in with some varnish to finish finish off. Now you see the size of the head. That's not big. It's because there's not a lot of material in there. It's like I'm using the finer part of the feather as well, which helps. That's why at times I'll tie in a hackle by the tip because the stems are much finer. It makes it easier. But at the same time you're picking the best part of the hackle. I mean, if you're using the other bottom of the hackle, it's thick. There's not, not as much colour, red at the top. You get a nice pick the best part, which I've done. Mm -hmm.